Hey everybody, we are back. We still have Brian with us, but I think we're going to learn something new. Um, so Brian, what do you want to tell? I know that there's a lot to get through in this segment. So like, so let's, uh, why don't we just go ahead and get started? Yeah, sounds good. So, um, if you joined the challenge just before this, we, we started playing with a few different ways to interact with Q, right? We did, uh, the inline where it was auto completing for me. We talked to chat a little bit. What we're going to do now is shift into the agent capability. And so these are longer running processes, but they have a much broader reach. They can accomplish a lot more. So, um, I'm back in my IDE here that we were looking at earlier. And this time I have the, the Flask R application open. So if you're not familiar with this, this is the demo project that you probably used if you were learning Python Flask, the web framework. Um, and so let me just bring this up. This is a really simplistic demo, but I'll bring up my development server here. And um, so if you've used this, it's just a little micro blogging site. So I might create an entry like testing, testing one, two, three. And I'll add that, and you see it just adds it into the list here, and I could keep adding new entries. Uh, so for the sake here, for the sake of this example, notice that I can't delete anything. I have no capability to handle a delete here, and so what I want to do with our time is add the delete functionality into this application. So let's come back in. Now, of course, I could do that. I could start just editing if I come into the the Flask R application here. All right, this is the implementation from the tutorial. And I could just come in here and start working on it and add new capabilities. Q would help me. But what I want to do this time is invoke one of these agents. So we looked at chat just before, um, and you saw me interacting with it and asking questions. What I'm going to do now is start with a forward slash, and that will tell it that I want to use one of the agents. And it lists them here for me. So you see things like writing documentation, running tests. Um, I'm going to... Can you give us just a quick... Yeah. Like what? What is the key difference between using one of these agents versus just doing everything through the chat or yeah. you know yeah. right clicking and sending to the prompt? That type absolutely. Of let me let me get it running quickly and then okay. um, I'll kind of talk you through that. So um, I, I'm starting this agent and you can see here I said please add the new method to remove an item um, and make sure you update the HTML, the code, and the SQL query. All and right. that's really that's exactly what you're asking. Um, before I do that, though, um, it's asking me if I want to use my dev file. I'll come back to this and explain it in a minute. I'm just going to say no to get this running because uh, this does this takes a little bit longer. So to come back to your question, uh, essentially the main difference here is I'm not doing this locally. Right? This is now packaged up my entire application and is moving it into a secure sandbox where Q can work on it. So it's no longer just me working on my machine. Um, in addition, when I'm doing this locally, I'm generally just looking at the current tab that's open. That's what Q is aware of. Right. We're, we're really focused on speed in those experiences. And so it will look at the, the open tab. If there's room in the context, it might grab an adjacent tab. But generally, the context is pretty small. Now I can see the entire project. So um, you'll also notice at the same time, though, that this takes longer. Yes. Right? We talked before, those inline completions, it generally will take a few milliseconds. Right. Right? When you get into the chat, it's a few seconds to get a response. Now it's going to take a minute or two to go and do this work, but it's much broader. It can look at the entire project and it can act on multiple files. So you can see now it's launched that sandbox. That took a little bit of time and it's starting to work. You can see that it's reviewing files. It's looking at the project. And based on my prompt, it's looking at the, the SQL. So right. it understands what the SQL looks like. HTML it's looking at file. the HTML page yeah. and it's looking at the code. So it's doing exactly what I asked it to do. Um, but it's able now to act across all of those files. It's not just looking at the one file anymore. Okay, and now you can see it's starting to make some changes. So it went into the... Uh, into the Python Change file, went into the HTML. Yeah. yeah, and it's kind of giving me updates about what it's doing as it's working and thinking. I think that's huge. I mean, context is everything when you're working in a code base, right? Like uh, just, you know, from a, a human working through a code base, uh, you know, right-clicking on a function that's being called and, you yeah. know, show me where that function is defined. That's yeah. kind of, you know, from a an agent standpoint, what's happening here, you're, you're giving exactly. it the capabilities to be able to see everything, where it's defined, how it's defined, what it's implementing, yes. uh, so that it can make more intelligent yes. suggestions. Yep, yep, exactly. Makes sense. Cool. Exactly. So it's finished now. Um, it's made these changes. So if I come in first into the HTML, you can see that it's gone through and added this new delete capability. It's got a confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete? Um, and then if I come into the code where the implementation is, you can see that first, it went in and updated the select statement. So this isn't actually needed for delete, right? This isn't part of delete. But in order to delete it, I need the ID to, to delete something from the database. Right. So it's smart enough to go and fix first the list capability so that the ID is there so that it can then make the delete happen and remove that item. Okay. 
Very okay. Cool. So it went and did that, and then it also made changes here and actually implemented. This is this is the meat of the request where it did the remove capability. You know, Brian, you're already selling me on anything that's going to write SQL statements. For Absolutely. Me. Uh, you know, I'm I'm all set uh, when it comes to writing SQL. I'm yeah. good. I'm at capacity. So if I can hand that over to yeah. uh, Q developer. Yes. Great. I'm, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> it's like having a helper. You know, just take yeah. care of that for me. Yeah. Stuff you don't want to do. I love it. So I, I merged that back in. Um, I'll refresh the page here, and you can see I now have a delete button, and I get to confirm, and it removes that item. Right, so it's gone, and Q has done the work of adding this new capability into the app for me, just as I asked it to do. Okay, um, I do want to pause. When, when I first started that before, it asked me that thing about the dev file, which I kind of skipped and said I'd come back to. I do want to come back to that really quickly. So I have this thing called the dev file here, which is essentially explaining to Q how to build my application. And if I had said yes earlier, um, Q would have also, after it made the changes, done a build and test and actually looked at any issues with the application and fixed them. So I chose not to do that just in the interest of time, but we were able to do that. And then that lets it go into a, a, you know, a build fix loop and go through and fix any errors that might be there. Nice. So it can really, really change the outcomes. This is a pretty simplistic example. So I was confident that it would get through it without any extra help. Okay. So at this point, um, we've gone in and added this new capability. We got a and... new feature, so we got to document it, right? Yes, exactly. Ah. exactly. But luckily, Brian, for you, any code that I'm involved in is self-documenting, so no documents needed. Uh, yes. Just kidding. <laughs> My team won't let me get away with that either, so I'm I'm assuming you're not going to let me get away no. with that today. No. Okay. No. So we spend a lot of time. Um, well, let me kick this off and get it running. I'm going to hit the next agent here and just call doc. Um, and I'm going to ask it to update my readme file. And um, I could ask it to just reflect the code change, but I want to tell it exactly what I want it to do here. So I'll do that. Um, and it will say, what do you want to do? And I will say, add the new um, delete method. Oops, I got to spell it right. Uh, add the new delete method. All right. So we've got a route for deleting now. Cool. So. Um, we spend a lot of time talking about how uh, generative AI really speeds up and makes you faster. I don't really think that's the important part. I think it's more about the impact it has on your code and how much better you get at, at keeping the code quality up. As a developer, I enjoy solving the problem. I don't enjoy all the follow-up work, the right. code reviews, the documentation, writing the unit tests. So if I have a tool that can do that for me, that's super powerful. Um, I, have, I have yet to meet an engineer I've ever worked with that has said, my passion is maintenance. Yes. yes. Uh, I, I would love to meet an engineer who had that passion. You, you have I it mean, here. <laughs> I, mean, I, have it. I think I know one, Mike. I mean, he does like, he calls himself the code gardener. That's you true. Know, so like, I, I do true. know one. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, most, most, most software devs are really most excited when working on the next thing. Yes. The next feature. Yep. Building out what's, uh, what's coming. Uh, and although I have met, I definitely have met engineers who like writing docs. Um, not all of us do. Uh, I assume there's maybe, I don't know if we're going to get to this or, or talk about it. There's, there's also a testing yes. unit test. Yes, absolutely. Agent. Yep. All right. so, so think about how this would change your, your developer flow, right? Your, every time I'm done, before I commit something, I can just ask the, the docs agent to go and upload, uh, update the documentation and bring it up. To, you know, to standard with all the changes that I just made. I can go in then and I can also ask it to update the unit test to keep my code coverage up. Um, and finally, I can also go in and do a code review, which is what we're going to do next, and ask it to run a code review and uh, make suggestions about how to improve the application. So this is done. Um, again, you notice that this took like 60 seconds. So it's not an instantaneous action. This is one of the agents that packaged up my app again, moved it server side, worked on it. Uh, in this case, I told it exactly what I want to do, but it will also do things like look through the Git history and try to understand what's happened in the application, what's changed. So it does all of that server side, and then it comes back and says, here's the change, and went and added that new delete section in. Um, so I'll just accept that. Okay. And it's updated my file for me. So... Um, the next thing I want to do is, um, before I commit this, I do want to run a code review on it. Right? And, and eventually, a human will do a code review as part of my check-in process. But before I get to that, um, let's come in, and I'm going to start a new window here. I would like to come in, and I'm going to do this time review and ask it to run a code review. 
And what type of uh, issues can um, the agent identify? Yeah. So there's a few things that it's looking for. Um, a lot of this is going to be focused on security. So the first thing it's going to do is essentially uh, composition analysis. It's going to look at all of the dependencies that my application has. What open source packages do I have dependencies on? Um, and are there any known CDs in those? Right. And, and identify any of that. Um, it will also do static analysis. So it will go in and look at the code and look for vulnerabilities in the way the code is written. Um, if you noticed right away when I scrolled through before, right, there's some hard-coded passwords and things in here. This is a sample application. And so there's a lot of code in here that's not best practice, that isn't ready for production. So it'll look at those. Uh, and then finally, there's a large language model behind this, of course. And so I can use that just like a peer review. And I can pass the code to it and say, just look this over and make some suggestions about how to improve the code. And it'll do that as well. Awesome. We're getting a lot of love in the chat. Everybody's saying that this looks like a really powerful tool. Excellent. Um, and that's amazing um, outcomes and driven coding. So great. Yeah, to me, this is this is really great, especially if, uh, you know, and I've, I've faced this in my own career and, you know, as I've, I've mentored others and things like that, as I've gotten more senior in my career. But, you know, a code review can be pretty intimidating uh, if you haven't gone through the process. Yes. And it can even be intimidating if you're new to a team and you don't know their process and you kind of want to put your best foot forward, yes. right? Like there are no second impressions, they say, right? And first impressions mean so much. So this is a great way, I would say, to, to build some confidence without yes. having to put it up to your, you know, team code review process and make sure you've got some of the more obvious glaring yes. things taken care of, right? Yep. Yes, absolutely. Um, there's been plenty of times where I'm, I'm a little humiliated by the things it does. <laughs> like, it doesn't have to be a human to make me feel small. That's but, right. Um, but but yeah, it's yeah. better It's better to go through that feeling with a Q developer who's not judging absolutely. you, right? Yes. There's no judgment. Yes. Yeah. Or before, like, contributing to an open source project. I mean, that's absolutely. another one, you know what I mean? Because that's... That, that's a big first impression. You know, you want to make sure you start off right. And... Out there in the public internet yeah. where it, everyone exactly. can see. Yeah. Where everyone yeah. can see. Yeah. That's, yeah. So, yeah, I, I could absolutely see a lot of value here in terms of, like, okay, Q developer, please help me help yep. me look look good in front of my peers. Yes. Uh, yes, absolutely. Which some people care about, not me. Uh, I do. Yeah. I do. I do, too, deeply. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot of my self-esteem. Uh, please shower me with praise in chat. I love you. <laughs> All right, so um, it's now finished and gone through and, and while we were talking, did detect a few issues here, of course, right? Um, and a few critical ones at that. So let's come in and the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to start with this package vulnerability down here. Um, so in this case, this is calling out an issue in Flask and this version of Flask that I'm using. And I can just hover over it to get a quick little overview or i can say i want to see some details and then i'll get a nice overview and there's a few things i can do from here so i could go into explain which is essentially just going to move this issue into chat and start a conversation about it if i don't understand what's here i can start to have a conversation with q um, and understand you know what does this mean what are the implications and kind of talk through it um you can see that it's also made a recommendation for how to fix it in this case it's just bumping the version sorry this uh, little window there is hanging over it. So I'm just going to accept that and it'll just bump the version and get me to, to a version that doesn't have this vulnerability in it. So I'll accept that one. Um, then I'll go in, let's look at some uh, the static analysis issues that it found. So in this case, hard-coded credentials. And so I'll come in here and it's calling out that I've got some hard-coded credentials uh, in the password. Again, this is a sample app. So this is not something that would ever have gone into production. But let's come in here and again, I'll view the details. And very similarly, it gives me a nice description. Notice this time it didn't pre-generate the fix because this is a little more complicated, needs some thought. But we have a, a large language model behind this. So let's ask you to go in and generate a fix for this. Yeah, uh, this kind of goes to a question that we got in chat um, on LinkedIn chat. Uh, they ask, what would happen if something fundamental wasn't available in the app architecture? And so like... For me personally, like looking at this, I would think, oh, we probably need some sort of configuration management tool to pull in this password from, you yes. know, a secure one, yep. like Secrets Manager or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Uh, but what if that's not in the application already, right? What can what sure. can Q Developer do for us there? That, well, that's a perfect lead-in because that's exactly the fix that is recommending here, right? Is is essentially the, the rewritten code is externalizing this secret and moving it into an environment variable. Uh, presumably, then I'm going to inject that. Right. From outside. Now, if I don't have that in, well, that's a good opportunity to come in and go to explain and start having that conversation with Q and say, well, where am I going to get this from? 
yes. and then have some conversations about the available options. And that might end up being Secrets Manager or SSM or something like that. Yeah. So there's lots of options that, that we could use. And I could have that conversation and, and get Q to make some recommendations for me. Um, so then uh, let's just peek at some of these other ones. So the last few issues that it calls out are really just readability ones. Uh, let me get rid of this window. Um, so, right, these last few are just looking at things that it's saying, hey, this is just hard to read. These are not security issues necessarily, but this is just Q making recommendations, like a peer might make recommendations for me to uh, make some improvements in my application. So if I come into this one, right, it's just talking through, um, well, yeah, just readability, maintainability issues, and, and generally making some suggestions about how to improve this. Okay. So... I've done a few things here, right? We, we used Q to write the application, and then we really started to focus on improving the quality with documentation, with a code review. Uh, the last thing I want to do is uh, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to ask it to write some tests. Can I ask from yeah. chat before we do that, Brian? Sure. Uh, we got a question about how can this be leveraged by security teams to keep the code and vulnerabilities in check? Yep. Um, I, would, I, would, I would expect you to say something along the lines that this is like supplemental to like a security team's normal yes. practices, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. This is, I, I think of this as more, these are things that I'm doing before I check in. Right. Um, the security team should be enforcing those policies then after check-in as probably part of a CICD process right. when you're doing your build. Um, Ryan's going to join later to talk a little bit about integrations with GitLab and what that looks like. Okay, great. Yeah, th th to me, this is like that, that uh, you know, for for lack of a better term, a marketing term that DevSecOps shift yeah. left <laughs> exactly. type, exactly. where yes. you're shifting some of the security uh, proactive uh, capabilities down to the developer to be able to run these simpler things that then yes. get added to the the pipeline later, and the pipeline is running the the more standard security team tooling. Excellent. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Perfect. Great. Cool. So um, as we're closing here, I'm just finally going to ask it to write some unit tests. Uh, and how does, it, how does it determine which uh, test cases to generate? Yeah. Um, well, in this case, I don't have any. Okay. I don't have any tests in here. But um, it had I, and probably I should have in, in hindsight creating this demo, um, I probably should have had everything but the delete method so that you could see it just go in and, and kind of fill in the blanks. Um, but here it is. You can see first going through and discovering what's here and saying, okay, I found these methods, and then I'm going to write tests for them. Um, and again, this is... A longer running process where it is taking code, moving it into a, a secure sandbox, and working on it iteratively. Um, so you'll see that this will take sixty seconds or so for it to do this, but then it'll come back with with unit tests written for. I see, uh, Brian. You and I write code very similarly. No tests. That's that's also a hallmark of my code. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Team no test. It's a, it's a sample. No, my team. team writes tests, and then they yell at me for not writing tests, and so. uh, I get in trouble. Yeah. All right. I don't know if we'll get to the. Uh, uh, no, it's up. It's tough. We're, we're so. Oh, we got it. Okay. There let's pull back up. Let's check. Let, cool. Let's take a quick look at this test before we got to run. Yeah, we won't spend too much time on this, but you can see here is the implementation um, where it's gone and set up PyTest and um, started writing some of these. And you can see, right, this is not just like the, the obvious success test. It's not just saying, show me the, the successful cases, but it's also doing a bunch of negative tests and edge cases mm -hmm. and stuff like that as I come through here, right? Um, and, and this is reasonably complete. Uh, you know, I, I haven't dug through deeply enough to know exactly what is and isn't covered here, but you can see, right, this is a couple hundred lines of code that it wrote of tests. So, nice. so this is pretty thorough. That's exactly great. And uh, luckily, Brian, everybody who is... Uh, Playing along with the developer challenge, Artie can get started because they downloaded everything. So yes. it's available there. Go try it out. And we will be right back with more. So stay here.